There's been a lot of excitement on the internet recently about spikes in the Schumann resonance. Not gonna lie, I was excited about it too, so I had to do more research into it. There was talks of ascension and rising frequencies and consciousness, all really wonderful things, but the problem that I was finding was that people were using Earth's geomagnetic field and the Schumann resonance synonymously. These are two very different things, and these spikes aren't really spikes at all. So I learned after speaking with an expert. Roland McCready is the head of research at the HeartMath Institute. These guys have some of the strongest magnetometers in the entire world. Canada, Lithuania, Saudi Arabia, New Zealand. They're in the business of deeply understanding connection. This is kind of a big topic, so let's start with the Earth's geomagnetic field. That's the uh, North and South Pole. It's what our compasses tune into. And it's static field or stationary field, meaning it's like a pure magnetic field, which extends out into space hundreds of thousands of miles. And thank God we have a magnetic field. It's what protects Earth from the solar wind. And so let me, let me help give listeners a, a, a reference here, because most of us yeah. in science class somewhere back in junior high school or somewhere along the line, got to dump iron filings on a glass plate and put a magnet under it. Of course. Right, and they all magically line up, right, and show yeah. you the shape of the field. But they lined up in lines, didn't they? Remember? Yeah. So those are called flux lines. And now think of those of the earth as guitar strings. Okay. And when you pluck a guitar string, what happens? It vibrates. Vibrates. And it has a frequency or a pitch, a note, as we call it, right? And you change the tension, you change the frequency. So the, the strength or the magnetic, uh, uh, we'll, call it, we'll call it amplitude of these field line resonances, is many, many times greater in amplitude than Schumann resonances. So these are magnetic waves that are basically trapped between the surface of the Earth and the bottom of the ionosphere. When magnetic waves get generated that fit the geometry of the cavity, and this is because these lower frequency magnetic waves bounce off the bottom of the ionosphere. So they don't just radiate out, they get trapped and they have to kind of fit the right wavelength around the earth, the geometry of the earth. And if they do, they're, they're what are called Schumann resonances. However, what most people don't realize and where a lot of this misunderstanding happens every couple of years actually on the internet, people go crazy and make all these assumptions, is there's actually eight Schumann frequencies, right? It always has been. And, and like I say, we measure them 24-7 all around the world, and I can assure you they are exactly the same as they were when they were first measured in 1959 and 1960. So why, why do you think people confuse the two so much? Well, most people don't even know about field line resonances. True. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have to be careful now, because when we say see a spike, I've got to I've got to put my science hat on a little bit here, because otherwise we're going to confuse people. A spike in what? Right. When you said a spike in Schumann resonances, meaning a spike in the frequency, that was totally, I mean, I, can, I looked at that data. I saw that I got hundreds of emails, as you can imagine, around that. The people that reported that were basically didn't have enough science background to understand what they were saying. And they, I looked at their data, you know, supposedly the proof of, and you could see very clearly that their magnetometer is very low sensitivity. You could barely see the first Schumann resonance. And then there was some activity that kicked up the, the resonances, which can happen temporarily, you know, through a magnetic storm and things. They, I'm not saying it's all exactly 7.83 hertz all the time. You know, if you have a magnetic storm, they can vary around and jump around, but then they come right back to their base frequency when things settle down. But anyway, they saw the, the, um, the third Schumann resonance on their magnetometer for the first time and thought, oh, my God, it's the Schumann frequencies increased up to this. I mean, it's really the, the third resonant frequency that's always there anyway. They just couldn't see it. That is so interesting. So as it turns out, all eight Schumann frequencies overlap human brainwave frequencies. So Earth is, Earth is vibrating and resonating at the same rhythms and rates as our hearts and brains. Okay. Wow. That Okay, I'm, I need to just wrap my brain around that. So all eight... All eight uh, Schumann resonances um, have a correlation with the different um, brain waves in our yes. uh, in our brain. Yes. Wow. <laughs> like that's amazing. So, okay. So now uh, my question is, how does that affect human beings? 
Well, that's a good question, and, and uh, that's not, I don't think, fully understood yet, but it's a lot of what our research is really about, and some other groups around the world as well, and, and there are a, few, a number, a handful of researchers who are looking at exactly this thing. So being, uh, I'm going to go back to early science class, if I may, for a minute, yes, to, please. to help answer this. So we've got uh, the, the experiment back in science class around the time we were playing with iron filings, probably, uh, yeah. tuning forks. Remember that, where okay. you got two tuning forks tuned to the same frequency, say C or something, and you tap one with your little hammer and your little thing, and the other one starts to magically vibrate along with it. Yes. Right? So yep. that's uh, was showing, teaching us about resonance. Mm. Now, in the case of our tuning forks, you've got air molecules. You're vibrating one tuning fork, and it's moving the air, the molecules of the air, and it's moving over and starting to vibrate the other tuning fork, which has to have the same frequency for this to work. So that's res called resonant coupling. Okay. Now the point of this is that you can transfer energy and information when two systems vibrate at the same resonant frequency. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Right. I understand that. Okay. Yep. So here's Earth and us oscillating, having the same resonant frequencies. Wow. Okay. So does that help give you a kind of a base understanding it does. of the theory here? Now, experiments have actually been done that shown that our brain waves uh, can synchronize up and become the same with this it, it phase. I mean, really synced in short periods every couple of minutes or so with the Schumann resonances. Wow. So there's possible. Uh, I think it's a very realistic suggestion here that we are uh, sharing and transferring energy and information between our brains and the Schumann resonances. Have you guys actually um, l looked at uh, like the alpha, gamma, all the different uh, brain waves and matched each single one up with them? Well, we haven't done that in our lab, but other other groups have done that and found certain resonant frequencies that overlap. And it, it, everybody makes a big to do about seven point. You know, the first one. Right. But actually, the second Schumann resonance is actually bigger in amplitude than the first one, right? So everybody's kind of been englamored with Schumann resonances in the brain, and that's all true. We do synchronize our brain waves with the, the Schumann resonances. But some of the work we've been doing, which is really, this isn't published yet. We're getting ready to submit two major papers on this. Yep. But what we're finding is it's really our heart rhythms are what's really synchronizing with the earth. And in fact, people's heart rhythms, even globally, we've shown in a recent study with, a, with groups all over the world, right? 20 groups of 20 people in, in five countries in vastly different time zones, their hearts, their heart rhythms are actually synchronizing with each other because we're synchronizing to the rhythms in the earth. But the heart's the big player here, not, you know, the, and then the heart has a lot to do with driving brain activity. It's been proven that the heart emits a frequency every time it beats and it can actually be measured up to three feet outside of the body. Check out the research that the HeartMath Institute is doing. It is surprisingly beautiful. When I think about the reason as to why I got so excited about this topic, I think it was because of the idea that something was happening. But something is always happening when we pay attention, we see that. Maybe it's time we try to harmonize and sync up with the earth and see what that feels like. For CE News, I'm Raji Kabli.